Hi everyone, I'm Liberty Dell and this is Liberty Update. A number of states across the country are working on legislation to regulate protests as demonstrators take to the streets in numbers not seen since the Vietnam War. At least 10 bills to limit protests have been introduced in recent months, which is a very, very dangerous precedent. North Dakota is considering protections for motorists who unintentionally harm or kill protesters blocking roads. A North Carolina senator is calling to imprison anyone who taunts an ex-official. Washington wants to punish protesters who, quote, disrupt our economy. Missouri is looking to make it illegal for violent protesters to wear masks. Iowa would give five years in jail for blocking roads, and Minnesota would sue for traffic disruptions. The ACLU, an organization dedicated to civil liberties for over 100 years, Years, despite the left only now seeming to hear about it, said this is the largest anti-protest movement the country has ever seen. Many of the bills were introduced before the election but are quickly gaining support as more and more protests are erupting and turning violent in response to Trump and conservative speakers. UC Berkeley went up in flames Wednesday night after so-called anti-fascist protesters sought to censor the controversial Milo Yiannopoulos. UC Berkeley can't campus police labeled the incidents, quote, major protest attacks, put the campus on lockdown, and ordered students to shelter in place after protesters threw fireworks, tore down barricades, and flooded into the building, breaking windows and throwing rocks. Protesters also set lighting units and a nearby tree on fire. This is all super ironic because even though the guy is a conservative, he is super gay and has even done talks in drag. But I guess the left only thinks gay is okay if you're a liberal hipster. The event was being hosted by the Berkeley College Republicans and had to be canceled. Similar events occurred last month when Yiannopoulos was scheduled to talk at UC Davis, prompting talks about free speech and demands that colleges censor what both students and faculty called hate speech. The violence spread off campus to include broken windows and ATMs at local businesses. The crowd also blocked off local traffic and attacked and pepper sprayed a delivery driver through his window. Trump, Trump responded by suggesting he would cut federal funding from the university via Twitter. Media and police reports state that for the most part, the protesters were not students, but a group of anarchists. Aside from the violence, they also handed out leaflets declaring that Yiannopoulos had no right to be speaking at the campus and were joined by a jazz band? This is real life, right? And not like a dystopian novel, this isn't idiocracy? NYU also fell into chaos Thursday after protesters arrived to heckle conservative speaker Gavin McGinnis, who had been invited to speak by the NYU College Republicans. Protesters broke into the event, started fights, and hit McGinnis with pepper spray. Before the event, protesters tried to prevent him from entering the building, and he had to be escorted in. Protesters chanted things like, quote, Nazi scum, your time has come, and set Trump hats on fire. The NYPD was called into the scene in order to escort McGinnis safely out of the building. Protesters were caught on video saying they were there to punch McGinnis in the face, and an NYU professor had a complete meltdown, swearing at police and calling them assholes for not beating up McGinnis and his supporters. She accused them of protecting Nazis and told the cops on video that it's their responsibility to kick their asses because the protesters are just peaceful kids trying to learn about human rights, but they've been forced to raise their fists against the conservative speaker because the police didn't. So what she's saying is, it's a college student's job to be peaceful and tolerant, and it's a cop's job to practice violence against anyone the left doesn't like, which is also supposed to somehow teach the kids about human rights. The protest was organized on Facebook, and the group claims they are merely exercising free speech and, quote, holding NYU accountable for claims of being against racism and sexism. Houston, too, has trouble brewing, as U.S. Today reported earlier today that over half a dozen protest groups have been holding secret meetings to organize protests during the Super Bowl. Meetings are being held in undisclosed locations, and organizers are allegedly communicating through encrypted messages. Messages. In order to stop possible interceptions, haha, ha, supposedly no group has the full details of the plan so that protests cannot be compromised. 
All that is currently known is that five separate rallies are scheduled for the weekend and are supposed to all come together on game day in front of the stadium. Organizers claim that the protests will be peaceful, but we all know how that's been going. Late last week, a federal court issued an emergency stay against Trump's immigration ban. The ruling came after the ACLU filed a habeas corpus petition in defense of two Iraqi men who had been tamed at New York's JFK airport. Both men had connections to the U.S. military or American security contractors and had been targeted by terrorists. The judge ruled that immigrants already in the U.S. and stuck in American airports should not be sent back home. Protests erupted at various airports around the country and the two men were released over the weekend. A federal judge in L.A. too has filed an even broader ruling aimed at stopping the orders altogether by forbidding federal officials from detaining or removing travelers. Duke University has pledged to fight the immigration orders by spreading a petition among faculty and staff and promising to keep the names of international students a secret from the Trump administration. Over 5,000 university staff members have signed the pledge. Starbucks has announced its plan to hire 10,000 refugees in 75 countries over the span of five years in the company's own anti-Trump protest. The plan was outlined in a letter sent to employees and stated that the U.S. coffee shops would start the process by hiring refugees who had specifically worked with the U.S. military as interpreters or support personnel. Apple CEO Tim Cook, who wants to remind everyone that he has contacts with, quote, very, very senior people in the White House is considering legal action against Trump because the orders simply aren't good for Apple. The company says it simply cannot innovate without immigrants even though nearly every iPhone is exactly the same. Apple joined Google, Netflix, Mozilla, and various other tech media giants on Tuesday in a meeting to discuss how to combat the immigration ban and filed a brief in support of a lawsuit. Some states are also jumping into the mix with Washington state announcing plans to sue the Trump administration over the immigration orders. California is also attempting to prohibit local law enforcement from cooperating with federal immigration authorities via a Senate Bill 54. The state's Judiciary Committee is also expected to hear a piece of fast-tracked legislation that would provide state-funded lawyers for anyone facing deportation. Sally Yates, the acting U.S. Attorney General, also voiced criticism of Trump's immigration orders and was promptly fired. Freedom House has released its latest report on political and civil rights around the world. The report states that global freedom peaked in 2006 and has been declining ever since. The organization measures freedom in all 195 countries on a scale of 0 to 100. Syria fared the worst with a score of negative 1. Top scores of 100 went to Finland, Norway, and Sweden. The U.S. got an aggregate score of 89 and lost some points in civil liberties with with several other countries scoring higher. There's some good news, though, this week. On Monday, Trump signed an executive order requiring federal agencies to cut two federal regulations for every new rule they add to the books. According to CNBC, the order requires the cost of the cut regulations to balance out the new regulation. The order declares that new regulations in 2017, quote, shall be no greater than zero and sets the budget for new regulations at zero dollars. Any new regulations would have to be proposed directly to the White House for review. Also breaking news this week, a federal judge in Washington, D.C. has ruled against the Presidential Debate Commission in the lawsuit filed by the Green and Libertarian parties in 2015. The judge wrote that the rules surrounding participation in presidential debates are arbitrary and unfair and ordered the Federal Election Commission to reconsider the allegations against them within 30 days. The lawsuit aims to force the Election Commission to change the rules around debate participation and recognize that the Debate Commission is not the nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that it claims to be. In January, the FEC ignored evidence against the Debate Commission, claimed no wrongdoing, and claimed the Debate Commission was completely nonpartisan and objective. In an ironic twist, Trump himself argued against the Commission as one of the hurdles facing his run with the Reform Party back in 2000. That concludes your Liberty-related news for the week. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you all next week. Thanks for watching.